Hi guys, and welcome to this week's Q&A. Um, I'm just gonna start saying this thing because I learned you have to say these things. If you like the content, please push like the like button. And if you want to be updated every week, there is this little ringing bell. Push the ringing bell button. And we will just love to hear your comments. If any of these uh, questions hit you, uh, or if any of these questions is a vibrationally mm, so match to what's in your heart. I also want to say that there will be a few mistakes in my talking, because I believe that everything needs to be authentic. So we only do one shot with the questions that I don't know up front, um, and I will just answer whatever flows through me. So I hope you like it and I hope it can help you along your journey. So without further ado, let's start. The first question. Now the economy is being brought to a collapse according to a carefully prepared pandemic, and more smaller farmers are to go bankrupt, meaning the bigger farmers will grow even bigger and the food they produce will be less nutritious. How is humanity going to counter this development? The veggies and fruits in most supermarkets look shiny and colorful, but they are pretty much tasteless and completely without any substance. The funny thing is that everything surrounding us is a directly uh, mirror of what's going on inside of us. So what are we presenting in the world? What is what we are showing the people? Are we showing a shiny outer face, but inside are broken and colorless? Or what are we reflecting? What is our surrounding and reflection of? Um, I believe... <laughs> so what I can see when I look into it is that some, the, the gap between... The, the gap between vibrations will, uh, will grow. So that means it will be very clear to see the big companies, really clear to see the smaller companies they will both still exist and you are the one who still have the choice what you wish to support. It also helps, the big gap makes things difficult to connect the two between each other on every level, but it also makes it more clear to see one from another, which allow you to make a choice for yourself uh, which one you wish to support the most. Now the 5G network has been activated in the parts of the Netherlands, mostly in the bigger cities, and the air quality will drastically decrease even more quickly, uh, become uh, much, uh, much useless for the body because the waves transforming to the O2 molecules. O2 molecules. Yeah. <laughs> what will be the best way? What will be the best way for humans to turn this development around? That's the main question. So, I do understand your fear, I do understand your worries, it is a lot of new going on, there is a lot of change and there is a lot of these change, there is a vibrational image to something which is damaging, damaging for humankind. Uh, I would like you to take a, a trip with me, on a journey, <laughs> into the past, into the first world war. I like you to look at what conditions we had there. And then we go straight forward to Second World War. I would like you to look into what conditions we had there. How much people were smoking, drinking, the A-bombs and all these kind of things. So from there I would like you to go straight forward to where we are today. I know in many ways that this time can seem scary. But the truth is that we are in a state of development. And even that we have parts of this world wanting to hurt the world, we are still developing into a direction where there is a lot of possibilities for change, where there is a lot of possibility for us to recreate a world that we truly want. The air poisonings and these monocles that you were talking about were actually a lot worse during the Second World War than they are to stay today. The difference is just that in this part of life, we can't see it because it's on an energetic level. 
so with our bare eyes we cannot see it. Where in the past it was smoke, it was in the air, it was easier to uh, measure. But the beauty of it all is that we as a humankind are getting more and more consciousness. We as a humankind are <laughs> getting more and more aware of how to look and connect with entities and understand what is good for us as a unity and what is bad. I want to just round this question off and see, I see you. I get where your worries are coming from and I understand your concern. The best thing we can do is look inside. It's look inside of ourselves, how to create a space of love and peace within ourselves how to create a place that send out a vibration which is not a vibration only match to the damage that is going on in the world surrounding us. And by cleaning up ourselves, we are sending out that vibration that will be a match to the solution that we search for. Thank you. How can we restore the most valuable social structures in human society, which has unfortunately increasingly lost ground in the past centuries, like family? Why are the powers that were so keen on normalizing unhealthy social structures, debauchering and promiscuous behavior instead of traditional, original, neutral family constellations? So, I need you to go with me on a journey again. <laughs> and look into the different aspects of life through centuries. For a long, long, long period, this has not been aligned. For a long, long, long period, there has been disturbance in this force because we thought that the greatest learnings comes through suffering, comes through pain, because through that we find our way home, right? So for a long time, humanity has traveled the journey of pain and suffering and disalignment within love relationships and family patterns and etc. The only thing is that we have become civilized. That means that we don't just rape people and kill them on the street, not so much as we did when we were Vikings. That sort of kind of sometimes happened. Um, <laughs> But now it's more this thing you talk about with uh, divorces and separations and living an unchristian life, as some would say. Um, what is going on is that we are searching for love. We are searching for that ultimate feeling inside, but we have not learned how to find it. We've been misguided by the way that we were brought up, by the belief system that were ruling us at that time. So. We think that love comes through this feeling of fulfillment within ourselves, but on a level where we have never seen it before. So we search for bigger cars, bigger apartments, beautiful partners, search for what we want in a partner, and then when we have it, we don't really want it. Because the one place we failed to look was inside of ourselves. It was that place where we find out what it means to just truly love the own being that we are. I'm not sure I remember exactly where your question started, but <laughs> the main miss is, is that on Earth we always have a little bit of it all. We have the examples of complete separations, which is also okay, because that is a part of that journey, that is a part of what they have chosen in this life, and I'm do you understand you might not see this perception, but I'd like to share it. There is beauty within it. There's beauty within that travel. There's beauty within the separation and finding out how you can actually connect, even though that you're not together as a pair. There's beauty in the separation and having a lot of multiple kids, hits and there. Of course, it's not in aligned with how we perceive utopia, but there's beauty in finding your way through these structures that is created. Because if they were not meant to be created in some form, we would not be a vibrational mass too. When that is said, yeah, I think you ask how to get back to, <laughs> to Uptorbia, oneness, love. It is to um, get to know yourself get to value yourself and value this other person you wish to have in your life.
it is to always look inside first to ask yourself why am i reacting this way what is going on within me before start blaming the people surrounding us our biggest challenge today <laughs> is that we have learned to put so much focus on ourselves that we do not see ourselves that it's what i want what i need but not in the form of what fully fulfills you and what you need to give yourself. I hope that this sort of kind of navigate you in the direction that um, you can take in and reflect over. And thank you for these questions. Yeah! <laughs> How can I know the difference between my obsessive compulsive disorder thoughts and my clairvoyance? Are the thoughts coming from the OCD or from my ability to see clearly? I love this one. <laughs> so, if we break it down, OCD is... How do you pronounce it correctly? Oh, obsessive obsessive compulsive, compulsive disorder. Disorder, right? So that means that you have some kind of thought in your head. You cannot let go of it. And most of the time you have to do a certain act in order of the thought to go along, to go away. Clavient. The, the, the seer, what they see is um, more like a picture that pops up in a form of clarity. It pops up in a form where your feeling draws you that direction. But, oh now I have to. So, for most clavians, <laughs> it do not link to a part of fear. Because the, the, the part that you see, it comes from a place of deep knowledge. Where the OCD comes from a state of thought, a state of mind, which triggers your emotional being. And then it gets impulsive, you cannot let it go, because then something bad will happen. So the whole feeling behind the OCD is like, if you look at it energetically, it has this wave of zigzag, 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 and it, it, it penetrates your mind. Where, when it's claviant uh, pictures, it is more flowing. It's more visible in a form, and yet harder to see. It is not something where you have to do something in order of it to go away. It is just something that is. I hope this made sense. If not, let us know. Comment below. <laughs> and even rhymes. <laughs> How do I deal with my ego? Was that all? That was, yeah. That was it, yeah. <laughs> How do How I deal, do with, deal my with my ego? ego? <laughs> well, step number one, become friends with your ego. So, ego uh, was created in order of source to experience self. Uh, to disattach for everything around you so you can create a state of being. An ego out of balance is an ego which are not serving your heart purpose and sometimes also are putting yourself above others in order of trying to create a better feeling within yourself and putting others down. Ego, it has a lot to it. So how to deal with your ego? is to first become aware of what ego means to you. First become aware why that this part of you which dislike the ego, so whatever your ego are presenting, ask it, why did it have to do that? Why is it here? Because no matter what our ego are presenting, it, it was creating that in order of helping us in that time where we created it, right? So, for example, I had this, uh, this thing of being this uh, super great boxer, right? And, uh, and people for a long period in my life thought that I was super hard, super tough. You could not give me flowers, but it was better to just give me a punch because I was that kind of person, which I'm absolutely not. But that was what I sent it out because I was so sensitive that I was afraid that yeah, that people would just run over me if they saw me, you know? So I created subconsciously this super guy kind of thing. And it worked quite well, but on my inside, 
I was super fractile. So it wasn't a match. My inner and outer wasn't a match until the two met each other. It doesn't mean that my ego was a bad thing. I did not create it to put other downs. I did create it to protect myself, right? So when you start to learn why you created that side of yourself, you can love that side and nurture it in order of rebalancing it with who you feel you are today. Everything in life is about including. This period is about including and uniting into oneness. Do you have advice for someone who wants to develop his or her psychic skills? Mm. Yes. <laughs> so this is a great question. I feel that I'm gonna make a few uh, videos, like guided videos, there, that is easier. So I'll make a few guided videos to a few tips of stuff you can do. Uh, I will do that. And um, like simple structure in order of getting closer to yourself. Well, it is really just taking your time not to try to force anything, but just to sit in the moment and feel whatever comes to you, whatever flows through your mind, through your imagination. It is to be fully present with what is or what is not. I will, uh, as I said, make these videos on how you can uh, write things down and let it like be written through you or how meditations, how to open your third eye and these kind of things, which is always nice to grab onto and hold on to. But the truth behind it all is it's all about intention and uh, surrendering to what is. Not trying to control, but being open for what is available for you in this exact moment. How can I be and express the most raw, purest me in contact with the world and all the energies? You listen to your heart. You follow whatever feels right within you. How can you express the most purest you? You answer to what you heart is calling for you are authentic and by bringing you to this reality all of you ups and downs falling in love with flowers <laughs> whatever rocked your world by doing that by being that you do exactly what you're sent here for so the greatest way to be the purest you is to being okay with the one you are in this exact moment, with every aspect that holds. The learning is, of course, to learn to deal with yourself and not put your uh, suffering, if you have suffering, upon others in the form of putting them down, but being brave enough to face it within yourself and being brave enough to say, I'm sorry, if you would step into the perception of actually putting it upon each others. So just become self-aware and authentic. That is a very beautiful mix. The last question. Yes. How can I make more money? I know that it's energy, but I find it difficult to let it flow in abundance. I feel guilty and unsafe if I would have a lot of money. Well, you sort of can answer your own question. <laughs> so, you need to look into why you feel guilty and unself, unsafe if you have a lot of money. What is it that you fear? Do you fear you cannot control yourself? Or do you fear the perception that you have of people who have a lot of money? Thank you for today. I, um, I know it was a bit messy. I hope you got the best out of it. And I am looking so much forward to hear from you next week. Uh, remember, if any of you have any questions or whatever is on your heart, write us an email and I will love to answer it all. Namaste.